الحمد لله رب العالمين ولا قبة للمتقين الصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين أما بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم وعباد الرحمن الذين يمشون على الأرض هونا وإذا خاطبهم الجاهلون قالوا سلاما صدق الله العظيم اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد Respected brothers, sisters, elders, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Alhamdulillah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives the tawfiq, the, this fortunate uh, ability you know, that he made it so fortunate that we can sit here and learn about the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. In, hope, in return, we hope to gain the pleasure of Allah and the company of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam on the day of Qiyamah and nothing else. We have no other, we don't seek any other returns, right? No money, we don't seek any, we're not going to get extra marks or anything on some exam, right? We're not going to get any worldly benefit from this except that we hope that Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala grants us barakah in our lives. And in, on the day of Qiyamah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala places in the company of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Today, inshallah, continuing with our Shama'il series, I'd like to talk about the way the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam walked and how he sat. Now, as Muslims in Britain in the 21st century, we owe so much to our pious predecessors, first of all the Salaf, the Sahaba and the Tabi'oon, who preserved the minute details about the Prophet ﷺ. Just imagine for a second that they preserved for us the postures of the Prophet ﷺ, right? Preserving the Qur'an, you know, someone can say, huge, this was a great responsibility. And they had, you know, so it was, it's understandable. But they even preserved the postures of the Prophet You know from the Shama'il, the book that we're covering, the Khulasa There's, there's so much that you know, unfortunately we're not able to cover in these halaqas But the Sahaba, they mentioned in detail the, the, the turban the Prophet wore The sword that he, he, or he had, his shield the, They mentioned the Prophet when he would lean against a pillow and they mentioned those that the Prophet ﷺ leaned on to walk when he was ill. And the trees that the Prophet ﷺ would lean on. How he would sit. To the minute details. And for the Salaf, we owe this, you know, first of all, shukr. And, the, and we can, you know, thank them. How? By making dua for them that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala... Uh, you know, raises their ranks in general to Firdaus. But at the same time, this is a reminder for us that we have a responsibility of preserving the deen for our children and our youngsters. Right? And we don't have to sit here and author books. That's not how we need to preserve the deen. The way we preserve the deen to our youngsters is by through practical, you know, implementation of it in our lives and in our families this is the greatest way that we can preserve this thing so today inshallah we'll talk about the way the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam walked and there's three hadith i want to cover the first one is by abu hurairah radiyallahu anhu he says ma ra'aytu shay'an ahsan min rasulillah sallallahu alaihi wasallam this is something that you know, many of the Sahaba, you know, it's recurring. When they describe the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he says that I never saw anything, shaitan, maraitu, shaitan, I never saw anything more beautiful than the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Not any human, but anything more beautiful than the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And then he says, 
It was as though, now a, a, a literal translation is, as though the sun was orbiting around his, his blessed face. What does that mean? Well, in Arabic, the way the Arabs, they expressed something or they emphasized something is by using comparisons and by emphasizing, you know, giving similes. So a very eloquent way of describing the beauty of the Prophet Sallallahu is to d compare it to the sun. Why? Because the sun is so radiant, isn't it? The rays of the sun are so radiant that the blessed face of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was so radiant that it was more beautiful than anything that he saw. As though the sun, uh, the brightness of the sun was shining from his face. And then he says, وَلَا رَأَيْتُ أَحَدًا أَسْرَى فِي مَشْيِتِهِ مِنْ رَسُولِ اللَّهِ صلى الله عليه وسلم. I never saw anyone walk faster than the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم. And then he says, كَأَنَّمَ الْأَرْضُ تُطْوَى لَهُ It was as though when he was walking, the earth was being folded for him. The earth was being shrunk for him. And then he says, that we to catch up with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam we would really have to exert ourselves and would really have to try to walk fast while the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he was just walking completely at peace and normal that was his normal pace there are several things I want to mention here first of all Something that a, a miracle that's mentioned about the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam It's called Tayyul Ard What is that? That Allah Subhanahu and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam He could cover a you know, long distance in a short amount of time It was as though the earth was being folded for him That he could he would walk at his normal pace But the earth right? He would be able to cover a long distance that the other Sahaba it would take him longer than uh, the Prophet ﷺ to cover. And the Sahabi says that we would have to really try our best to keep up with him. And he says that uh, In Arabic, we have the word Ajhada Dabatahu that someone, you know, when someone makes his horse run really fast, right? That you have to really hit it with the whip to make it run faster than it normally than it can bear this is what you call you know the, the word ajhada that's where it comes from so sahaba they would have to more than they could bear to just to catch up with the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam but while for the prophet sallallahu this was completely effortless whereas for the sahaba it was something that they would just to catch up with him to catch up with his pace of walking they'd really have to try and we know from this, we can understand that this was not just a physical trait of the Prophet ﷺ, but it was rather a miracle that he was given. Now, one thing I want to mention is why does the Sahabi mention the face when he's talking about hadith, about how the Prophet ﷺ walked? Is it? Think, what's, what's the relevance? Well, when someone wants to take a selfie or picture, what do you do? You stand still. Isn't it? Why? Because if you're moving, you can't, your face will not be at peace. You're moving, you can't keep, you can't, you can't be calm. What he's saying is that even though when the Prophet ﷺ would be walking really fast, yet his face, facial expressions would be, you know, he would be, they would be graceful and his face, he wouldn't be, you know, tired and uh, he would be uh, very at his normal uh, the normal state that he would always be at this is how he described his way of walking the second hadith is narrated by Ali radiallahu anhu he says uh, rather he one of his children uh, he describes 
كان علي رضي الله عنه إذا وصف النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم قال when علي رضي الله عنه whenever he would describe the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم he would say كان إذا مشى تقلع كأنما ينحط من صبب that when the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم he walked he would walk with a stride he would his steps would be really powerful and he would walk as though he's descending from some a, a, from a uh, high from as though he's descending from a higher place to a lower uh, to a lower pl- uh, place what does that mean well first of all the word that ali radiallahu anhu he uses to describe is taqalla and this comes from the the word qal'a shajaratu that when you have, has anyone ever seen a tree that's f- come out of its roots because of wind you've seen this right few years ago I remember I was walking and it was really windy that that, uh, that December or and and I saw a huge tree just turned upside down on the car the car was smashed to pieces and I was really amazed that you know subhanallah it's it's uh, the wind was so powerful that the this huge tree with the roots the roots were really deep but it came out in the middle of the street and it smashed the car to pieces, right? So this is what qala means. Qala means to really rip out the root, the, a, a tree uh, or, or plants with its roots. And qala, therefore, it's in a meaning to to show a meaning of power. So when the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam walked, he took really powerful steps, right? And he lifted his feet. He did not drag his feet, right? Number one, he didn't drag his feet out of arrogance, right? You know, people walk with a swag, isn't it? Shoulders back, you drag your feet. That's it, that's perfect, that's perfect, right? And secondly, sometimes people walk, you just drag your feet out of laziness. When you're tired, you just, you're, you really say, you're just, I'm just dragging myself through this, isn't it? You just. But the Prophet Wasallam, out of both, to show that out of you know that he walked when he walked he had no display of laziness first of all and secondly right he walked and lifted his feet he did not drag his feet right to show to avoid this out of to show you know to avoid any display of arrogance and the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam even in his walk he was a man as you say a man on a mission right that Whenever he walked, it would be as though he had a destination to reach. He wouldn't just stroll around the streets, pointless, right? Uh, whenever he had to be somewhere, he would walk, uh, you know. And in his walk, he avoided both displays, either of laziness and of arrogance. And Ali radiallahu anhu in another hadith, he says, كان النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم إذا مشى تكفأ تكفؤا كأنما ينحط من سبب The when the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم when he walked he walked with a slight, slightly bent forward slightly bent forward as though he was descending from a high place right in one of the Sahaba who, who, who described the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم he says that his head would often be closer to the ground than the sky he wouldn't walk with his head up out of arrogance. Even when he conquered Mecca, isn't it? When he conquered Mecca, he came in, his chin was touching his chest out of humility. That today I've not conquered it. I've not come in as a conqueror, as a Jabbar, as a Zalim. No. Even when he was conquering uh, Mecca, when he's conquering Mecca, he conquered with his head low. Out of show of complete humility. And it wasn't only fake this display of humility. Right? Some people you you know we often see um, that people walking really slowly, speaking really slowly, as though this is a sign of piety. That you know I'm 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 a Sufi lost in this dunya. I don't know anything about the dunya. No no. Right? This is an assumption that people make that if you're a pious man, then you don't, you have no connection with the dunya. You don't know anything. 
right? As they say, you're a lost case, and uh, you know you ha you don't know. You're a very weak person. Now, this is this was not the character of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. His walk was a powerful walk, yet of humility, of humbleness. Right. The main thing that we can learn from the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam walk is humility. Right? And in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, subhanallah, it's amazing how in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he touches on the subject of humility, of humbleness, right? He talks about it in the context of walking. Right? In Surah Furqan, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَعِبَادُ الرَّحْمَانِ الَّذِينَ يَمْشُونَ عَلَى الْأَرْضِ هَوْنَا That the servants of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, of the Rahman, are those who walk on earth in humility, right? In Surah Furqan, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he talks about the characteristics of those who rejected, of the, of the kuffar, who rejected the message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and then he begins to talk about the Rahman, the opposite, right? And they rejected the message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala out of arrogance, isn't it? On the other hand, the, the servants of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they accepted the message out of humility, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he mentions, you know, I think about 12 or 13 traits of the ibad, of uh, the servants of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, right? And these include, first of all, correct belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, right? This include righteous acts, physical acts, and financial acts to obey the command of Allah and his messenger, social dealings, right? Uh, Allah's fear in his worship, uh, these include refraining from sins and even carrying your, 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 your family, your wife, your children in and you're motivating them to do good. The first thing, Ibadu Rahman. What is a Abd? Abd is a servant, right? And a servant, a slave, owes everything to his master, right? He does not owe anything. Everything that he has is for the master. And he's always ready. As soon as the master calls, you answer. This is what you call a servant. The servant of Allah is the one who answers the call of Allah every time it's called. And this is not just the adhan, but all of the ahkam that we have. All of the laws of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As soon as it comes to fulfilling them, the servant of Allah answers them. And then Allah says, hawna. Here we can describe hawn as, you know, Hum humbleness, modesty, and the opposite of walking with pride or arrogance. Okay, but again, it's not something that you know. It's not walking with you know walking really slowly, or walking as if you're weak, or as if you're ill. Once Umar radiallahu anhu, he saw a man walking really slowly, right, as though he's ill. So Umar radiallahu anhu said to him, what's wrong with you? Are you ill? He said, no, no, I'm not ill. Then Umar radiallahu got his whip. He's about to hit him. He said, walk properly. Walk like a mu'min, a believer. Right? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, uh, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said that the strong believer is better than the, than the weak believer. Right? So being strong in your uh, physically and in your character, this is not a bad thing. Right? This is... What is the, from the teaching of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam? Now, Allah subhanahu wa taala uses the word yamshun to walk, but the uh, Sayyid Qutb, the uh, author of Fizul al Quran, right? He says, although Allah mentions walking, but what He refers to and what it includes is the a person is in his entirety. Right? The entire character, the personality of a person. Right? It includes that. The person is himself in everything that he does, not just in walking. So it doesn't mean that you're walking very humbly, but as soon as you sit down, you're very arrogant. Right? Don't take this meaning. Right? In all of the dealings of a person, this person is, is humble. Even in the way a person thinks, his ideas, this person is humble. I remember several years ago, uh, when we were younger in another city, 
uh, we had a you know there was a joke that the entire well our area knew right it was a there was a young lad um, tall lad uh, that was known to walk around go from walk around the area you know with a swag and it'd be really walking like this and this was a joke everyone knew right? this, per this young lad would be walking with everywhere with you know great display of arrogance I don't know if youngsters still do this, walk around with music really loud. Is that still common? Yeah, I heard it's common. It still, it still happens, right? But back now they they had Walkman. Remember the Walkman phones, and then the um, um, uh, Wi-Fi uh, Bluetooth uh, speakers came. So that was quite famous, right? People used to walk around with them playing music full loud, you know, really loud. Before that, it was ghetto blasters. Oh yes, yeah, those uh, cassette players. Yeah. That was Brother Imran's days before us, mashallah. <laughs> 70s and 80s, mashallah, <laughs> right? So this young lad, we remember, my brother, we would share this joke, right? That I would say to my brother, oh, I saw him today. And say, I saw him today. Just, my friends at school knew about him. Right? The friends in, in Masjid knew about him. That, you know, oh, he's walking. I saw him walking at this place, walking. You know, it was, it was just a, um, um, the display of arrogance. Right? It was so v visible in this person, right? Um, and nobody likes people who are arrogant. Nobody likes this. I remember one of my uh, lecturers at uni. Every single lesson, every student knew about this, this uh, lecturer that he would talk about his family as if they're the royal family. My wife has done this. My children have done this. My daughter does this. My son is like this. You know, I've done this. I've accomplished this. Allah But And this is something I've seen in a lot of academics. Right? Uh, not just you know, trying to uh, uh, point them out here or single them out but this is something I've seen in a lot of academics that have been around they're really arrogant and proud of their achievements right? but this is something that we should avoid right? looking at what Sayyid Qutb says that Yamshun a person is humble not just in the walk but in everything that he does when I was in Egypt I remember there was a in one of the classes uh, there's an old man and he would, he would attend the class as a student as well and this old man was every other student was fed up of him why because every lesson he had to object to the teacher whatever teacher is whatever even on things which are agreed upon he had to object and just argue and debate right and all of the students were just totally fed up of him right one day and now I came back to the UK and I couldn't attend the lessons anymore. But the lesson would be recorded. So one day I was watching the recording of one of the teachers. Uh, he was teaching the lesson. I was watching the recording. And I heard the old man's voice. I'm like, oh no. You know, he's, he's objecting now. And he said, like, yeah, but Sheikh, you know, I disagree with you. And I think like this. And the Sheikh is an old man, right? He's a very famous Sheikh, right? And he's extremely knowledgeable. And I think he had enough of him. So he humiliated him. He pointed out that you're wrong in this way and you're wrong in that way and he said okay today he entertained his arguments and he just you know totally humbled him right and I text my friend who was still in Egypt said oh I, I had pleasure in watching this video this lesson today because of you know the, 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 the way the Sheikh humbled him the point is that nobody likes people who are arrogant why because it's arrogance that did the kuffar of Mecca doubt the Prophet's trustworthiness? Did they ever hear the Prophet lie or swear or do any kind of sin or drink or anything? Never. But it was arrogance that led them towards Jahannam. Is it? Why is it that the Prophet وسلم, he said about clothes, he said, Ma as min finnar. Whatever is lower than the, the, uh, garment, uh, the, the ankles. Whichever garment is lower than the ankle is in, in Jahannam. Why? Because people would do this out of arrogance. Drag their clothes to say that, you know, I can afford so much. I can afford so much clothes that, you know, I have enough to drag it with me. See, the act seems minor, doesn't it? You just, your clothes are hanging down. But it's not the clothes itself that are hanging. But it's the intention behind it, the arrogance that's involved in there. In the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he talks about Luqman. 
and he mentions several advices of Luqman. Right? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that uh, uh, Luqman, he addressed his son and he gave several advices. I'm not going to get into it. One of them. Now, this is extremely beautiful. Just imagine the weight behind this advice of Luqman that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he places it in the Quran. Just imagine, right? And this is something for us to think about. What does is, what is he say? He says, he's addressing his son. or oh, his sons. He says, وَلَا تُصَعِرْ خَدَّقَ لِلنَّاسِ وَلَا تَمْشِ فِي الْأَرْضِ مَرَحَا إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يُحِبُّ كُلَّ مُخْتَالٍ فَخُورٍ He says, oh my son, don't turn your face away from people out of arrogance. You know when someone's talking to you? Oh, oh. Right? We've all seen this. Perhaps we've even done it. That I just can't be bothered with you. Just, just go away. Right? Don't turn your face away from people out of arrogance. وَلَا تَمْشِ فِي الْأَرْضِ مَرَحَ And don't walk on earth out of, uh, with arrogance. Right? Why? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not love the one who is arrogant and boastful. Now, the, the famous scholar Abdurrahman Sa'adi, who was from the, he was a major scholar, and he was from the teachers of uh, scholars like Sheikh ibn Uthaymeen, the Saudi scholar, and many other major scholars of the 20th century, right? And he has a tafsir called Tafsir Sa'adi. I believe it's translated into English as well. Very small points he mentions. So it's, a, it's something that's worth looking up. He says, he describes, what, is, what does he mean by maraha? He says, بَطْرًا فَخْرًا بِالنِّعَمْ He says, arrogantly, فَخْرًا بِالنِّعَمْ Being arrogant and proud of the blessings that Allah has given you. But these ni'am, these blessings, right? You're arrogant about them. Nasian lil mun'im. While forgetting the one who's given you the blessings. Thinking that I've achieved everything I've done in life because of my efforts. And I deserve everything. Right? If you've ever heard those, um, these uh, motivational speakers, right? You've heard them? You know, they'll scream and shout and make a person feel good. Um, yes, sometimes it's good to listen to these motivational speakers. Right? When you want to do something, you want to go to the gym, listen to it instead of listening to music. But a lot of times, many of these motivational speakers, they create a lot of arrogance in people. That you can do this, it's you are like this. Right? Thinking that everything I've done is from myself and I deserve it. I didn't need my parents' du'as. I didn't need my teachers' du'as. I didn't need help from my, uh, my family, nobody. I did it all myself. Right? The car I have is because I've done it. I've earned the money. Forgetting that you live in your dad's house. Don't pay any bills. And think that you earn the car. Right? And forgetting that everything is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then he says, مُعْجِبًا بِنَفْسِكِ While being arrogant about yourself. And thinking, you know, being in awe of yourself. This is what he means by maraha. In the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he mentions a, an incident that took place in the life of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. A blind sahabi came to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. While the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he was giving da'wah to some of the leaders of Quraysh. Right? Now this blind sahabi was poor. He was from the lower class. He was considered at the time. And the leaders, elite, they didn't want to mix with the, the commoners. Right? So this blind sahabi came while the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was giving da'wah. And he interrupted the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam several times, and the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he turned away from him. He sort of frowned, and Allah subhanahu wa taala he revealed Aba sawata wallah about the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam that you frown and you turned away from him. Anjaahu al-aama you frown and turned away. You frown why? Because the blind man is coming to you. Allahu akbar. Look at this. The Prophet ﷺ was free of all arrogance. Yet, this act of turning his face away from him. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he didn't do it out of arrogance. He was just busy, wasn't it? And he, he did it because he thought that, you know, I'm giving da'wah, perhaps this da'wah to the, the elite, he might get disturbed and disrupted. That was his intention, not out of arrogance. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, straight away, he told the Prophet ﷺ, that you know, وَمَا يُدْرِيكَ لَعَلَّهُ يَزَّكَ أَوْ يَذَّكَرُ فَتَنْفَعُ الذِّكْرَ How do you know, O oh, Ya Rasulullah, that this person could benefit? He could learn something, right? It could serve as a reminder. 
Just the act of turning away. And this is what Luqman says. Don't turn your face away from people out of arrogance. And then he says, Waqsid fi masjid. Waqdud min saltik. Right? That be moderate in your, in your, the way you walk. Don't walk with arrogance. And now, it also means, don't walk being, looking so weak that people think nothing of you. I believe a scholar, uh, the, it was Shah Waliullah uh, who, who, who advised his son, Shah Abdul Aziz, that make sure people don't see you walking and they think that you're lazy. Why? Because they see you as a leader. They see you as a scholar. Right? Don't do anything that would make people think low of you. And one of his advice was that don't walk in a way that you seem like a weak person. Why? Because this is not the son of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, right? And again, this is beauty of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. How he was able to have moderation, that he was able to have humility while having power and while showing power. He had not using the power in in an arrogant way. The second thing, inshallah, I want to talk about today is the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam sitting. Just two hadith, uh, three hadith will mention the Sahabiya Qayla bint Makhruma. She says that Anha raid Rasool Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam fi al-masjid, wa huwa qailun qarfa saa. I saw the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam sitting in the masjid in a way that Asif is sitting, right? Just like that. I saw the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam sitting in a position called qarfasa. What is that? He would sit with his his uh, um, uh, legs raised, his shins raised against his stomach, and he would hold his hands like this. He would tie his his legs with his hands uh, tied around him, right? And then she says. فلما رأيت رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم متخشعة. When I saw the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم and his humility في الجل متخشع في الجلسة being so humble in the way he was sat. She said فرعدت في من الفرق that I was overcome with fear and awe of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم. This is a miracle of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم that you, he, this is a very, you know, you're sitting on the floor, right? And you're sitting in a way that shows humbleness, right? With no extra formalities. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, in anything he did, he didn't have extra formalities just to make himself appear uh, as someone extraordinary, someone that deserved extra attention from, you know, he did, he did. He made himself just like the everyone else, right? So she says, "I was overcome uh, by this awe and this fear, despite because it was because of the humility that the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam had in his sitting." And the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam in a hadith he says, "Ajisu kama yajisu abdu wa akulu kama yakulu abdu." That you know, I I sit the way. A servant sits, and I eat the way a servant eats. Never sitting out, you know, with large dinners, right? State dinners, as they're called, right? No, he said, I sit the way a servant sits, not as a Jabbar leader and kings of the time. No, as a servant sits, and I eat just like the way a servant eats. And this exactly when uh, uh, Qayla she describes. Uh, being overcome with fear and awe, this is also mentioned in a description that was mentioned by Ali radiallahu anhu before. Anyone remember about seeing the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam? Man ra'ahu. Do you remember? Something. Whoever would see the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam suddenly, what would happen to him? We mentioned at the beginning that man ra'ahu badihat and haba. Whoever saw the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam suddenly. He become over, you know, overcome with fear, right? But then he says, "Uman khalatahu ma'rifatan ahabahu." Whoever sat with him and got to know him, he would fall in love with him. Ahabahu, yani he loved him dearly, 
right? And this is exactly what happened to Qayla. When she saw the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, right? She was overcome by this awe. The Abad bin Tamim, he narrates from his uncle, أَنَّهُ رَعَى النَّبِي صَلَى اللَّهُ مُسْتَلْقِينَ فِي الْمَسْجِدِ وَوَادِيًا إِحْدَى رِجْلَيْهِ عَلَى الْأُخْرَى I saw the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم leaning in the masjid, right? Uh, laying flat rather, right? On his back in the masjid, we're placing one foot upon the other, right? Laying down with one foot upon, uh, upon the other. Laying in the masjid, right? One of the... Uh, Beautiful things about I'tikaf in the masjid is that no matter how nice of a bed you have at home, everyone sleeps on the floor, isn't it? Right? And we have carpets in a masjid. But can you imagine at the time when masjid there was no carpet and no floor, it was just the the ground. The Prophet saw some sleeping, and you know if you're sleeping on the ground, your your clothes are gonna get dusty. But that's it. He was sleeping. He didn't care about any. Extra formalities. What would people people think? I don't. Um, in a report that we find, the Prophet وسلم, he prohibited actually sleeping like this, laying down with your feet uh, placed upon the other. Now you might be thinking, what's going on here, right? Why do you think that is? I don't know. Here it mentioned the Prophet وسلم, He saw the Prophet وسلم, laying down with one foot. Placed upon the other. But in a report, the Prophet says some prohibited this. Why do you think that is? What do you think? Blood Sorry? Blood circulation. Um, I, don't th- I don't think so. I don't think so. Would it have anything to do with blood circulation? I, I don't th- the feet, are, the legs are not placed so high, you know, that it would affect that. It's just normal. Just normal that you lay down. I had you want to show us? I just like I had this. MashaAllah, you know he's got his feet up, just like that. Right? Lay down on Ahad? Ah, that's it, that's it, perfect. Okay, MashaAllah, Alhamdulillah. Right? Anyone want to guess? Oh, what do you think? What do you think, guys? Imam Khattabi, he, he comments on this, and he says the reason why the Prophet Wasallam he stopped them from doing this was because many of them would wear what we call a longi, isn't it? They didn't have trousers like we have. Sword, you know, right to the to the leg. They clothes the the the, the bottom, right cloth was open. So if they sat, uh, you know, like this, this fear. Uh, they, if they lay down like this, this fear that they the setter, the aura would be exposed. That's why he prohibited this. Not that in itself there's some there's some it's a haram act, right? Just like the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, at the time. Of khutbah, he prohibited people from sitting like this. Why? Because first of all, if you're, you know, uh, the Prophet ﷺ, he would often. Uh, this is a practice in uh, still you know, amongst Arabs that what they do is they keep their legs up like this. They'll get the a cloth and they tie their legs like this. Okay, behind the back, so they bring it from behind the back and tie it. Why? Because they just keep themselves in one place, right? And it's comfortable to sit, especially if you have to sit for a long time. But the Prophet ﷺ, he prohibited this in one, one ration. Don't do this. Again, not that it's haram, but just out of the fear that your satr could be exposed. Especially if you're wearing loose garments. Okay. And the last thing, the last hadith I'm going to mention is, كان رسول, uh, is written by Abu Sa'id al-Khudri radiallahu anhu, the Sahabi, he says, كان رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم إذا جلس في المسجد احتبى بيديه When the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم would sit in the masjid, he would hold, right? He would sit in the same position that we mentioned before, tying himself with his hand, with his hands wrapped around him. Now, there is the, this is the ultimate display of humility and humbleness. That you're just sitting on the floor. You don't need... The only time the Prophet ﷺ would sit on the member or stand at the member when he had to give a khutbah. Otherwise, you walk into the masjid and he's sitting amongst the Sahaba. That's it. Right? And the Sahaba themselves, the, the, the uh, humility they showed in front of the Prophet ﷺ was amazing. In a, a famous report that if you walked into the masjid, Ahad, you know what you would see? The Sahaba sitting so carefully 
as though they were birds on the head. Right? Have you ever seen a bird on a statue, Ahad? Have you ever seen birds on statue in city center? Have you seen a statue? You've never seen birds? Right? I've seen a bird. MashaAllah, you've seen a bird. Right? Statue, birds sit on stationary objects, things that don't move. Imagine the Sahaba sitting so carefully, listening so carefully that it was as though birds were sitting on the head. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us uh, humility in our character, in our personalities, in our speech, in our actions, and uh, in our thoughts. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the love of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. قولوا قولي هذا فاستغفر الله لنا ولكم ولسائر المسلمين جزاكم الله خيرا